Hello and welcome back to another PC build and today's build is going to be slightly different in that I'm not actually building the PC today. It's going to be my wife doing the building. She's building her first PC for video and photo editing. Now if you've a regular viewer of my channel you probably noticed the Lego I have sitting on my desk. My wife actually builds the Lego for her channel Lego Lady. Now there's about 50,000 of you subscribed to my channel at the moment and I'm going to ask you guys a favour. Um, my wife is really trying to get her channel up and going. At the moment she has 25 subscribers and I'd love to give her channel a real boost. So at any stage I've helped you guys build your PC, helped you pick your components or anything that you found useful on my channel, this is your chance to pay me back. Go over to her channel, like I said the link's in the description and hit that subscribe button. She only puts out a video once every month or every two months so it's not going to clog up your feed and it's not going to cost you any money, but I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so getting back to the PC build, let's take a look at the parts we're going to be using today. For the case, we're going to be using the Lian Li O11 Dynamic Evo. For the motherboard, we're going to be using ASRock's B660 Steel Legend. For the CPU, we're going to be using Intel's 12th Gen i5, the 12600K. Keeping that CPU cool, we're going to be using a 360mm AIO from Fractal. It's the Lumen S36 RGB. For RAM, I've got 32GB of Kingston Fury Beast RGB and 3600MHz. For storage, I'm going to be using all M.2 NVMe drives in this build. For the boot drive, I'm going to be using the Sabrent Rocket 4.0 in 500GB capacity. And I've also ordered another 2TB NVMe drive for file storage. Unfortunately, it hasn't arrived in time for today's build, but we'll drop it into the system at a later stage. Powering the whole build, I've got a 650W fully modular power supply from BeQuat. It's the Pure Power 11 FM. For the graphics card, we're going to be using the MSI Gaming X RTX 3050. For case fans, we're going to be using Lian Li's AL120 Uni fans in black. And the final part for today's build is some white cable extensions from Cable Mod. Okay, let's get building. Okay, first thing to do is repair the case. So the front glass panel just pulls off from the top. The other glass panel just pulls off the same way, so you want to pull it off from the top. So the other side panel, if you just want to pull it away from the top and lift it away. So this SSD bracket's held on with two thumb screws. Do you want to remove them? Um, and then we've got this fan bracket. So you're going to want to push this clip up and then you're going to be able to slide the bracket backwards and lift away. So the top panel's held on with two thumb screws at the back. So if you loosen the thumb screws and then you'll be able to slide the panel backwards and away. So we've got a fan bracket on the top of the case we're going to need to remove. It's held on with two screws. Do you want to remove the two screws? Okay, with the screws removed, you can see you've got clips at the top. So you'll be able to slide the bracket towards you and then lift it away. So we've got a removable fan bracket at the bottom. It's held on with this thumb screw. So you want to remove the thumb screw and then you'll be able to slide the bracket towards you and lift it away. Okay, so we're now ready to work on the motherboard. So do you know where the CPU is going to go? In here. Yep, uh, M.2 SSD. And right here. Yeah, and you've also got another two slots. So when your other drive arrives, we'll put it into one of those, the RAM. And these slots. Yep, perfect. And we're also going to put the bracket on for our CPU cutter before we put the motherboard into the case. Okay, so you have been doing your homework and you watched my videos on how to install the CPU. So do you want to go ahead and open the socket? Perfect. Okay, so do you want to go ahead and insert the CPU into the socket? So you make taking care to make sure you've got the text up the right way, which you do, and you line the notches at the bottom and the top up with the CPU, making sure it's all the way in the socket, which it is. Perfect, so do you want to close the cover over? And don't worry if this bit of black plastic pops off. You can't close it yet. Remember, you have to push down on the wee bit here. Yep, so that pops off. Okay. That's fine, take that out of the way. So we're going to put that in the motherboard box. If we ever take the CPU out of the socket, we're going to need to have to put the cover back on to protect the pins. So now we've got this out of the way, you can close the lever down. Even though that's like, like completely lined up. Yep, yeah, close it down and see what happens. That's tough. Yep, yeah, perfect, that's it done. So it, it is actually quite stiff. If you haven't done this before, you'd actually worry you're going to do harm. So the first thing is make sure the CPU is properly seated in the socket. Push down here. And you can actually keep a finger here where you're closing the lever to take a little bit of pressure off the lever. Oh, right, okay. okay, next up the M.2 SSD. So we're going to go for the top slot. So you just need to remove the two screws holding on the heatsink. Okay. 
Okay, so we're ready to insert our drive into the socket. So this is the socket here. So do you want to insert your drive in at a slight angle into that socket? I'll hold the motherboard for you. And then, yeah, she line it up. And then just wiggle it from side to side, pushing forward, and it will go into the socket. That's great. And then flatten it down. So what you'll notice is the same screw that holds your heatsink on is going to secure the drive into place. And some motherboards, you actually secure the drive separately and then put the heatsink over the top. So you want to set your heatsink back on. Now, the, the only other thing to point out, if we were using this motherboard from new, there'd be plastic protection on the back of the heatsink. I've done a build with this before, so that's why there's none there for us to remove. So just on top? Yeah. And line the holes up. Perfect. That's you, and you want to put the screws back in now. Okay, next thing to do is insert our RAM. So we've actually got four RAM slots. Um, you say you've watched my videos, so which slots are we going to put our RAM into? Um, I would go for this one. Which one? This one. The first one? Yeah. Okay. There's a little diagram on the motherboard. Does that give you any help? That looks like it's the second and the fourth. Yeah, so if you've only got two sticks of RAM, you want to put it into the second and the fourth. First of all, obviously, if you've got four sticks, you're going to put them into them all. So you want to open the wee clips on the second and the fourth slot. They're just on one side. So some, you're right, some other boards will have them on both sides. This one, there's only clips on the one side. Okay. Now, the other important thing about the socket is if you look at the socket, there it's not of equal length. There's a little pin in the middle and there's two sides and they're not of equal length so your RAM has to go in the right way. Um, so do you want to line it up with the slot? Making sure you've got it the right way around. Yep, so the bits at the top, if you slide it into the bits at the top first of all, let me show you. So there's a bit there and a bit there and you just let it slide into those. Okay, okay. once you've got it into those, lower it down a little bit. Just push it down. Yeah, and just put it down there. And then what you're going to want to do is firm pressure over the middle of the RAM and it will clip into place. So just firm pressure down, keep it nice and straight. Two hands, yeah. Push. That's you, so that's the RAM into place. So same thing with our other stick. That's you, so just push it down gently. So once you've got it in the middle, it's good firm pressure just over the top and that will clip into place. So both sides push down. That's you, that's the RAM installed. Okay, so the next thing is the bracket for our CPU killers. We've got four holes here, so you want to put the bracket in from the back. Okay, so next we want to push the spacers on to hold the bracket in place. So after we've installed our CPU cutter, we're going to put these thumb screws on, which are going to secure the cutter. We'll just put them on loosely to keep them where we can find them for now. So the next thing for us to do is install the I.O. shield. It's going to go into the cutout at the back. Um, the audio connectors tend to go at the bottom, so it's just going to be in here and pushing. You have to take care you don't cut yourself on the back of the I.O. shield. Okay, so that's you. So do you want to push the I.O. shield into the back of the case? Just firm pressure, and you'll hear a clip as it goes in. Up. Do you have both sides? Yeah. Yep, that's it. So next thing to do is set our motherboard into the case. You can see the standoffs we've got at the back, which are going to line up with the holes in the motherboard, and we're also going to line the motherboard up with the I/O shield we've just installed. All the holes line up. Yep. That's you should just get it to where all the holes are lining up. Just leave it off at the top. That one hurt. That's it. That's you now. It's clipped in nicely. So what you're going to do is secure the motherboard with nine screws. So start off with the middle one. Next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in. So I'll pass them through one by one. The first is your HD audio cable. It's going to go into this header. So you have a look at the header. You'll notice there's a pin missing on it. So you're going to have to line the cable up the right way around. Okay, and then we'll just pull the excess cable through to the back. So this is our ARGB header, so I'm going to bring the cable through. Now, looking at the header, you've got two pins, a gap, and then another pin. So make sure you line the cable up the right way around. So 
So next we've got our front panel connectors and Leon Lee have been really kind to you and combined them all onto one plug. In other builds you actually have to do the separate pins on the cable. So again you notice you've got a hole missing at the top and there's also a pin missing in this cable so make sure you line up the right way around. Okay, so next is our USB 3.0 cable. They let the two USB-A ports in the front of the case work. So we'll bring it through the cutout for you at the side. The top one or the bottom one? Top one? Yep. It's going to go into here. Now, if you notice there's a little notch on the header itself, you'll have a similar notch on the cable. So it's important you line it up the right way round. And this one, you can actually damage these pins really easily. So just be careful putting it in. Where's the notch on the... Notch is here. And on the cable, the notch is here. Okay. So if you bring it in this right. way, it will be the right way around. Okay. So just line it up nice and gently with the header. Only when you're happy, it's definitely in the right way. Apply a little bit of pressure to push it in. Don't push too hard if it doesn't go. And then just above it, we've got our USB Type-C header. So we'll bring the cable through and you want to plug it in. Okay, next thing to do is install our power supply. So we're going to insert our power supply with the fan facing out the way. So our EPS cable, which is going to give our CPU additional power, is going to go into this header. So I'll pass it through to you. I'll get you to plug it in. There you go, so it's just going to go in like that. So what you'll notice, you've got these combs on the cable which are going to help tidy up the cable. So you just want to move them up a little bit and it'll help organise the cable. Yeah, and space them out. So space that one out. And see that makes the cable look a bit tidier. Oh yeah, I didn't realise there was two. Okay, pass the 24 pin cable through to you. So last thing to do is plug the SATA cable coming from our case into the SATA cable from our power supply. Okay, so we're now ready to start work on the AIO. And importantly, we've decided what way we want it. And the wire coming from the pump is going towards the back. So you want to set the fans on with the cables all facing the back. So next thing to do is secure the fans to the radiator using the long screws. So we'll put them through both bits of the fan and into the holes. Okay, so coming from each of our fans, we've got two wires. Um, one has a four pin PWM fan connector on it. And this is what's actually going to power our fans and allow our motherboard to control the speed of the fans. The other is an ARGB connector, which is going to control the lighting. Now, one of the nice things that Fractal have done is that these can all daisy chain together. So we've got an additional connector here for the PWM and we've got an additional connector for the ARGB. So all we need to do is join these together. Okay, so do you want to plug this cable into here? So you've got another connector here for the last fan. So we're going to plug this into your CPU fan header and that's going to power all three of the fans. Okay, so same thing with the RGB. So we're going to take this one and you want to plug the one coming from our second fan into here. That's you. And then take the ones from the third fan. So you'll notice we've got one spare ARGB connector. So coming from our water block, we've got an ARGB cable here, which we're going to plug in. I'll not plug it in now because it's easier to plug in once we've installed the water block to the motherboard. The other cable coming from our radiator is a three pin fan connector. So we're going to plug it into the pump header because our pump is actually installed on the radiator. Okay, so do you want to put the top radiator bracket onto our radiator? And then you're just going to line these slots up with the holes in the radiator. That uh, ones? Yep, that's you. Okay, and then you've got the shorter radiator screws to go in. Um, I've lost one of them, so we've only got 11, but I will leave one of the middle ones out, we'll be fine. Okay, so what we now want to do is attach our top bracket. As we do, we're going to pass all our cables through to the back. So you're going to pass the cables to me, and I'll put them through for you. And if you want to just slide it in at the top, I'll pull the cables and you do. Now there's little notches here, you want to line it up. So 
bring it back all, slide it all the way in, bring it back all the way to your side, and then push it in through those notches. There's notches at the top as well, so pull it, push it forward, and then you can secure the bracket at the top using the two screws we took out at the start. Okay, next thing to do is get our cables plugged in. So this is our CPU fan header. So I'm going to pass the cable coming from the fans on the radiator through. And you want to plug it in. Okay, then we've got our pump header. So I'm going to bring the cable coming from our pump through. Now, it's only got three pins, but the, the, the header itself is four pins. But there's this little notch here that's going to help you only plug it into the right pins. So you line the notch up. So next thing to do is plug in the, to the ARGP header. So we'll bring it through this cutout here. Okay, so next thing to do is apply some thermal paste to the CPU. So we'll put a P-sized amount in the center of the CPU. Okay, so next thing to do is to align our cooler up with the bracket. So do you want to line, lower that down? And then we've got the thumb screws to go on the corners. So next we need to feed the ARGB connector coming from our water block through to the back and we're going to plug it into the ARGB connector that's free from our fans. So I think it's best just to plug it, feed it up underneath these brackets and then pass it through to the back. So the last thing for us to do is to plug the ARGB connector coming from our water block into the additional ARGB header coming from our fans. So we're now ready to install our fans. We're going to have two groups of three and a single fan at the rear. The two groups of three, one's going to go at the bottom and one's going to go at the side. So we need to join our fans together. Do you want to do that? So all you do is set the fans over to the side. You're going to go on like that and then you're going to push down. So slide that one in. Okay, have you joined those three together? Okay, and then we've got one of these connectors to go onto each group of fans. So you can see at the side here, we've got the pins here. So all it does is push into here and you slide it all the way down. So that's that fan ready to go. So I'll give you one of these wires here. And then if you want to slide it into here. I'll just push it all the way over. Perfect. Okay, so we'll start off with our bottom fan. So we're going to have them set to intake, so we can set the bracket on. Okay, and then we've got the fans for the side again. We're going to have them set to intake. Okay, so we can then insert our rear fan into place. Okay, and then you want to screw the fan in from the back. Okay, so do you want to grab the cables coming from the fans and pass them through to the back, just up through here. So we've got another system fan header just here, so I'm going to bring it through this gap here for you. And do you want to plug it into that system fan header at the top? Okay, and then we can set the bottom fans into place. Okay, and then if you want to pass these cables coming from the fans through to the back. And you've got a PWM header just here if you want to plug it into. Okay, and then you can put the side bracket into place. Okay, I'll pass you the PWM fan connector through and we've got another header just down the bottom here. And then I'll pull the cable through to the back. The final thing for us to do is to plug the RGB connectors coming from our fans. Rather than using the Leandly Unifan hub, which requires software control, I've got this little Fantax hub. With the, it has exactly three connectors on it, which is just what we need. 
and we can actually use this little controller to control the effects on the fan. So there's no additional software that we're going to need to operate our fans. They're going to be controlled by the motherboard, fan curves, and the ARGB is going to be controlled by this controller. Right, so there's your controller. Do you want to get the wires? So we'll plug the first one into there. The only additional thing that we're going to need to plug in is to power this little hub. So it's just a SATA power cable. So you're going to plug it into one of the other SATA connectors coming from our power supply. So we're now ready to install our graphics cards, but we're going to need to remove the second and third bracket cover from the top. Okay, so we can now open the top PCIe slot clip on the motherboard, so just push that slot. That's you. Okay, and then you want to just replace the two thumb screws that you removed. So then I'm just going to pass you the power cable through. If you want to plug that into the graphics card. And then use the combs to tidy up the cable. So this one slid down. So you always start up at the graphics card and work backwards. So I'll bring the cable up. The final thing to do is some cable management so we can get our panels back on again. Lee and Lee have provided some cable management clips to help hold the cables in and out of the way. So the build is complete and I'm absolutely delighted with how it turned out. I think this black and white colour theme looks brilliant and the O11 Dynamic Evo really is an absolutely brilliant case. I've done a number of builds on it and every one of them I've been really pleased with. But it's good to finally give this case a home with my wife's PC. As well I think she did absolutely brilliant putting her first PC together. She had obviously done her homework, she had watched a few of my videos. So like I mentioned at the start I'd really appreciate it if you'd head over to her channel and hit the subscribe button. We have 25 subscribers at the moment and I would love to really boost her channel and see what me asking you guys to do this actually makes a difference. Um, you're going to see her build things like this. She's got the brand new Back to the Future Lego model and she's currently building the LEGO Titanic, so she's got some great videos coming up on her channel. As well, if you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. And I'll see you in the next video.